Okay. All right. <laughs> Nine sounds really good. Yeah. All right, whatever your idea is, go ahead. All right. Um, let's see. Here it is the end of the year. And um, back in April, um, I was having, people were having really intense responses to the circles. And I, I still wasn't um, putting them out there myself. Um, just here and there, I would contact somebody and some people would, would, um, respond and others just totally didn't. And that was okay. So, so there was a little bit of, um, adjusting to like the new way of being in business, that total trust that, that the actual creation has some responsibility in the world of of bringing people to it rather than feeling like it was all me and that that I should push it out there and that that whole old way of you know, all the messages messages that we get for marketing and every, everything else for um bringing in money and so there was this weird thing of, okay, there are these circles and they're having emotional impact on people and they're, do, they're doing a service and, I'm, and that service is coming through me and I want to be fed back from it. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh, there was that weird, that was... That weird, um, the uncomfortable bit of just really trusting that this whole thing would would make itself happen, and that it, and that actually, if I get in the middle of it, it would create sort of a block. Um, and so there was all there was a lull for a little bit almost to make sure that that trust was going to be i was going to be sincere about that trust and um so i got really clear about um what that what that trust meant and once that was really solid in me and, and I had a, a good way of speaking about the, um, like a real sincere and authentic way of speaking about the circles where I wasn't like searching for words and kind of wondering, is, is this person going to just think I'm totally nuts or anything like that? Then it didn't matter if I was talking about the circle or posting about it or if someone else was posting about it it all just became natural. So um, one person I did contact was this intuitive healer in Santa Fe who um, I had taken a course with, just an online course through Daily Ohm that I thought was very good about developing your intuition. And so I contacted him, told him about the circles because he kind of says some of the thing, same things that my circles seem to be doing. Like if you've, you've hit a block and you just can't seem to get past something, uh, past a certain point on a, on a particular issue, come work with me and, and we'll, we'll get you moving again. And so I thought, well, maybe, maybe he does some workshops and maybe he would enjoy collaborating and so um, I went down to see him, and he's, uh, he's a really cool guy. Uh, Max Heistein is his name, and um, very open, not at all threatened by someone encroaching on his intuition business or anything like that. And um, then when you were traveling, you came with me, and we both went down to see him, and there was a retreat that he, or a workshop that he put on in um, June that I 
went down and did some circle demonstrations for for his people and that was really cool so this is this has become a thing over the course of this year that i actually make appearances and people rather than me explaining the circle as i'm making it like i would a normal um um art demo I just, everybody goes into a meditation while I'm making it. And as it's changing, like I'll cover up something and I'll hear things in the room like, <gasps> or, oh, you know, just sounds. And um, just the watching of the circle happening has a whole different effect, especially in a group. And so that has been become amazing and the word is getting around about that and I'm uh, starting to get like speaking fees even though I'm not really speaking much and how perfect is that for me that's like my dream gig <laughs> we will come we will pay you to come and not speak <laughs> no it's fine no <laughs> Wow. Hmm. Well, good. That was really. Hmm. Yeah, that wasn't quite my idea yesterday. But <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Oh. Well, I have some some good ideas after that too. So. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, all right. I'll give myself four minutes. Uh, good. Towards that. So it's the end of the year and Rita has been on kind of a tour of sorts um, this past year and um, <clears throat> been really fun. She's been collaborating with a lot of folks. I've had, I put her in touch with folks. She's put me in touch with folks um, through my little sabbatical in summer. I've actually visited and we've gone down and done some things in, um, in Santa Fe. It's been a lot of fun. She gets to, be a speaker without speaking, which is her greatest joy. And um, yeah, along the way, we also kind of discovered that, that the circles have a power to cut cords. And also um, a lot of like um, things that Rita talks about with angels and cutting cords too. Um, there was a circle that she created that like had some angel wings I saw her do. And um, we really were in a meditation about cutting cords one time. And um, she created a circle while a group was in a meditation and talked about the same issue. She did speak a little bit about her own issues about cord cutting. And she created a, a large, large circle about cutting cords. And it stayed in that workshop for the whole weekend after they did the meditation. And all throughout the, that workshop, people kept feeling this support from this larger circle that Rita had created about cord cutting and about love and about um, angelic intervention. And so now everyone wants a print of that circle to take with them. And they're going to get a print of the circle eventually because everyone wanted to buy one. And um, it's become kind of this theme of whatever the theme of a workshop is. It's like, there's this overarching circle that happens, not only this physical circle of people, but this embodiment of the circle of people comes through her meditation circles that she creates in the workshop and people share their stories. And it's just a natural sharing of stories. It's a natural meditative time where it's not really even guided too much you know there's a meditation that may be guided but then people just sort of claim their stories and and this circle kind of speaks to them to give them permission to to speak about their story and um take in whatever healing they need to do and cord cutting and um it's really helped Rita. it's really helped other folks and um helped move their relationships move rita's relationships um just this idea that you're supported by this interdimensional entity that is made manifest through this drawing, this creation of pastel on paper, 
during a meditative session um, really holds a lot of power because it does feed on the energies of everyone else in the room and their breathing and, you know, the pauses and the meditations. And sometimes they, they morph and like the one with angel wings appeared and um, people end up crying after the meditation because they, they have their eyes closed and it's all in bodies of things that they've seen in their imagination when they were meditating. And so um, there've been some really times where it's like almost hit very spot on with some, some of the folks in the meditation group that this was what they saw and that Rita was picking this up. And um, this is what came through um, as this was happening. So um, it's been a great tool and a great way to just introduce a group um, circle to people, not only a physical circle of people, but this manifestation of uh, their interdimensional circle that's created when they come together and people always want prints. It's wonderful. Yeah, I like that. So it's the end of 2018 and I feel like this has been a really fun and enjoyable year. Lots of changes, lots of shifting, lots of things that happened throughout. I remember at the start of the spring, I took a sabbatical from work and I also did like a temporary gig um, with old coworkers. It was good to reunite with some other folks too for a little while, getting at some extra money. Um, but I was able to just leave it where it was when it was finished. And um, it was really nice just to be able to do that and to feel like it was like one last kind of, I don't know, a good shift of, of, um, giving me some other income plus giving me a break plus giving me an opportunity to help um, a place that I really liked before. And, you know, throughout this whole time, like May, June, July, I mean, of course I did the tennis tournament in Mankato. I actually visited Mankato a few more times and I was almost very, um, very enamored. And I have a feeling that um, even though I'm in Iowa right now, that Mankato, Minnesota is going to be kind of a stopping point more often because I really enjoy being there. And, um, but yeah, it's been such a great year of change and uprootedness and I feel kind of emptied in some ways, which is really great. I've always wanted to kind of feel that sense of what's next and I have no idea. And I've really stepped into that, which is great. And Rita and I have been doing some work. I've been traveling a lot. It's really crazy how much travel I've been doing and it's nice and it's wonderful. I'm a little tired sometimes from traveling, but it's great to be in Iowa. I can kind of branch out um, everywhere. You know, if I want to go south, I can go south. If I want to go east or west, it's, um, it's very central. So it kind of lends itself to travel. And um, so I feel like it's kind of just a natural spot. Um, so I haven't really dug too much into the local community. I've seen a few friends and done some few things, but but traveling seems to be kind of a natural thing that's coming about. And um, when I get a chance, I can go away on the weekend and I do it. And um, yeah, so business is going well. I'm transitioning into coaching a lot more and I'm <clears throat> in negotiations to sell the business like I wanted to. It's almost finished and um, that'll be really nice. And then I have no idea what's next. I'm here in Cedar Rapids, my lease is short term six months and then I'll, I have no idea right then. So um, I'm happy about that. So um, some people think it's a little unnerving. Sometimes I feel a little unnerved, but that's okay. And um, so I just, I think that I'm in the right spot when I have a feeling I don't know what's going to happen next. And I really enjoy that. And so I'm trying to ride that out as long as I can and to be open to the things that happen. Um, Rita Circle had been really helping me in my new home um, with the dog and with me. And um, actually when the dog is not here, I, I feel the presence because the circle is there by her food dish and by where she usually is. So it has been really nice and a nice reminder of June bug, um, you know, when she's not here and it's, it's been really fun. I feel like I live in this nebulous space, which is really a little secretive to most, 
but very special to me. And I kind of keep it a little secretive with, with, with that because I know that I'm, I don't want other people's input because um, it's all about my discovery. And I share what I want to share. Rita and I keep kind of going, but it's just those magical things that come about. And I really, really like it. Um, and when I'm writing to my inner wise self or my inner wise elf writes back to me, he tells me that I'm just exactly where I need to be creatively, spiritually, not like living this non-attachment by opening up to just whatever it is. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's also like coming your Christmas time and we're finishing that out. And, um, the solstice has been great. Solstice is always like, it's like the anniversary of when Rita and I started doing this work. So, um, you know, we did a, a whole solstice, um, three hours of Kai Lego and it was so great. And, um, just Kai Legoing about the solstice, about the wheel of the year coming up. So we kind of traded turns when it turned into a three hour Kai Lego and I loved it. Um, so I think that's going to be a tradition of, you know, really intense yearly three hour Kai Legos. Some, well, sometimes they're two hours anyway, we just talk, but this was intense Kai Lego really talking about cosmic things, really talking about soul journeys. And, um, she actually did a, a Kai Lego with me when I was doing my Kai Lego, she was also drawing. And we started doing that a while back too. So she could actually make little tiny circles when during our Kai Legos. And um, I'm still trying to like do things like that, but I don't necessarily draw as well. And, but I have magic markers. So, um, but also we got good at really zeroing in on our feelings that way during the other person's Kai Lego. And it made a difference in supercharging. And so not only that, we've actually like, shown this process to other people about Kai Lego and art and creation. And um, it's been so much fun. The three hour Kai Lego was intense at the end of the year. And so people are starting to see these differences. Our cosmic landing community is, is taking off and it's really wonderful. They, people see these things happening. And we intentionally keep it in small groups and do workshops and do other things and Rita goes and travels and then we do some online groups and we keep it intimate. We keep it smaller, although it's growing just because it makes it so much more um, personal for people. And, you know, Rita's getting, you know, circle business. I am getting coaching business too. And so we can keep, Oftentimes we just do these free and then everybody just sort of clamors to us because both of us are busy. And so it's, um, you know, and, and we're still trying to set, you know, our price points, just but what intuitively comes up. It's always floating. It's always great. And people know that. So it's, but yeah, I, I'm wondering where I'm going to land still. And I love that. And I never knew that being so uncertain would give me such clarity over the long period of time, over a long period of my life. And so um, that RV is coming closer. I can sense that. I have, I'm, I'm saving for it and it's coming closer. And um, when that happens, that's all bets are off. So I may be at my folks, I may be in Mankato, I may be at points between, I may be in Cedar Rapids. That's what I'm telling folks. And I'll, I'll have a regular address for people to do, probably somewhere in Iowa. I'll have an address. Or maybe South Dakota where there's no taxes for business or property. But that's that's something I'll figure out. So, um, But I'll keep traveling. I'll keep doing this. And it's just getting closer. And I feel really comfortable with learning all these new things about how to get internet access, how to get um, good travel rewards, how to volunteer at campgrounds, how to, you know, go and meet folks and um, – yeah, so even I go and I, I go on little adventures, bring my tarot cards and my my dream notebook, and um, people get readings. People are having a lot of fun. But yeah, that's like my life is kind of starting this travel thing, and staying in one place just isn't feeling right. 
So um, very different than before where I was such a homebody. I am a homebody and introvert, but um, I like being a home, an introvert on the road, even if I hold up into a really cool coffee shop and work on stuff all day. So, um, and just be a little casual observer of life or a writer or something like that. So. Ooh. Yeah. Fun. Okay. I have a few things. All right. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Yep. I'm ready. So, um, Scott did his, um, uh, his temp job and what do you know? It was a win, win, win. And he kept recognizing those scenarios coming up very easily. Like you, you started to, um, just feel immediately if some, if a decision was going to lead to a triple win. And if not, Nope, no thanks. And so opportunities just kept coming, coming forward. And some of them seemed sort of counterintuitive that, you know, the average person would advise you against it, but you could feel it was win, win, win. So you went ahead and um, this feeling of being now at the end of the year, being emptied and that that actually feels good. Whereas a lot of people would feel like that was a, a bad thing to be emptied, but you feel it as a, a freedom and um, space and space in here. Um, and this not knowing where you're going next just speaks. It just shouts freedom and we we realize that people cling to that. I have to have, know what happens next, and what a cage that is. Is we're just totally into and and loving not knowing what happens next, and um, it got really solid and clear, or ephemeral and clear when we did the um, three hour solstice Kylego, that just, that was just a major shift. I mean, it's almost like you want to spend your life Kylegoing after you do something like that. And just, you know, we're advised not to live in the future, but there's something so powerful about ignoring what day it is and living in that. Um, and, and we've been showing people rather than marketing, we're, we're just showing people how, how it works because it is hard to, it's like we, we've had to, we would have to invent a whole new language to speak to people who are not in this place. And so showing them is really the only way to do it. And so we, our groups are growing a little bit and um, people come and they, they, they get satisfied for where they are at that moment. And then they, they go away for a while and someone new comes in because they've been so affected. They have to kind of go integrate what, what's happening with them now. It's like everything speeds up for them. So they have to just um, let it all soak in. And then they come back around and they, everybody around them sees what's going on. And so people are sent word of mouth to us because um, the shifts are becoming really apparent for people. And there's no... Um, yeah, the, it's just it's just integrating all the senses with um, sound and and visual with the drawing, and um, it helps people learn and and make changes in ways that just aren't available in the 
other places. 